keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. God requires us to keep his commandments. None of this out here is keeping God's commandments. Did you hear, did you hear gunshots earlier? Maybe like 40, 40 minutes ago. Three brothers got shot out here. Today, yes. Three brothers got shot out here. That's a result of us not keeping God's commandments. That's hatred, it's malice, all in our communities. Gang bangers and so forth. You understand? Read this. Come on. What's your name again? Nigel. And you said you've been watching in six or seven years, right? Yeah, off and on. I ain't really, you know what I mean? I okay. I'm going to show you something basic, Nigel. Watch this. Deuteronomy 10 12. Watch this. Deuteronomy 10 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? That's the question. It says, now that you know you're Israel, what does God require of you? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him. Nigel, what does it mean to fear God? Yeah, because think about it. We're taught that God loves, that's what you just said. You thought God loved everybody, right? Yeah, I did, yeah. You thought he did, does he? According everybody to the Bible? Everybody who bought him, yeah. But does he love everybody according to the Bible? Who wrote that? What do you mean, who wrote it? Who wrote it? So you don't believe in the Bible? No, I believe in it, but I'm saying, but you said. Give me that in song. 68. Watch this. I'm going to show you. The book of Psalms, chapter 68 and verse 11. The Lord gave the word. Who gave the word? The Lord gave the word. Nigel, who gave the word? The Lord. The Lord gave the word. Watch this. Great was the company of those that published it. So now it says God gave the word, but great was the company of those that published it. So that means he gave the word unto certain men like Moses, Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah. You understand? And they wrote those words down. They recorded it. But the Lord gave the word. They didn't do none of it on their own volition. You understand? They didn't make stuff up. They didn't do that. You understand? Read it one more time for this. The Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. Okay, great was the company of those that published it. So now, go back to Deuteronomy 10 and 12. So now, you understand? So when this says certain nations God love and certain nations he hate, he said that himself. He told him to write that down. So now, in terms of fearing God, why would you have to fear God? For what? What purpose? You're a father, right? Okay, do your, should your children fear you? They shouldn't fear you. They shouldn't have a certain level of fear if you tell them to do something. Yeah, yeah, something's yeah. going to happen yeah. if they don't do it. Yeah, should, yeah. Okay, so why do we have to fear God now? Now you get the correlation. Being obedient to his word. Yeah. Okay, so now, yeah. let's set his gift. Starting from the top, 10 to 12. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? You see that? What does the Lord thy God require of thee? Just like your children. You say, hey, when I come home, your room better be clean. Right? That's what you require of your child. This is saying, what does God require of you, Nigel? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways. It says to walk in all his ways. That means God set a path. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right, right. You got to walk in it. Read on. Exactly. Yeah. And to love him. Yeah. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul to keep the commandments of the Lord. To do what? To keep the commandments of the Lord. God requires us to keep his commandments. None of this out here is keeping God's commandments. You understand? That's why he said, hey, when you came he's like, Nigel, what's going on? You've been watching for six, seven years. This is not, none of this is keeping God's commandments out here. You understand? To keep the commandments of the Lord. 
commandments of the Lord and statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For what? For thy good. What is the purpose of keeping God's commandments? For thy what? Read it again for Nigel. To keep the commandments of the Lord and statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. For thy good. So, so we do what God tells us to do. It's a benefit to us. He would have, he, now he doesn't have to punish us or bring judgments upon us. You understand? Let me ask you something. What this, what, what, what's going on today? What's today? What are they doing out here? What's everybody doing out here? Okay, but it's called what? No, what they're doing is called what? What's the name of this day they got? They call out here. What kind of parade? It's called Mardi Gras. You didn't know that? I don't know. You tell me. Why are you out here? Why you come out here? Okay, you came out to enjoy the parade. But God says you're supposed to keep His commandments. You ever seen? Hey Nigel, let me ask you something. Did you hear? Did you hear gunshots earlier? Maybe like 40, 40 minutes ago. Three brothers got shot out here today. Yes. Three brothers got shot out here. That's a result of us not keeping God's commandments. That's hatred, it's malice, all in our communities. Gang bangers and so forth. You understand? Read this. Come on. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make bonus upon their head. Mind you, this is a law. This is a law for the men of Israel. It says we shall not make bonus on our head. You got hair on your head? You, you, you shave it off? You shave it. God says what again? Thou shalt not make bonus upon their head. You see how it says thou shalt not make bonus? So now it's not about it falling out. Brothers get thin hair and so forth. Not all of it. Some of it. Nah. Listen to what God says. Look at look at the brother behind you. Look at the brother. That's an example for you. Read it again. Thou shalt not make bonus upon their head. Nigel, what is they shall not mean? So remember, the scripture we read earlier, get, go back to Deuteronomy 10 and 12 again. Hold that and read this again for him. Watch this. Watch this, Nigel. This is why we got to go over the basics. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And now Israel, what do the Lord that God require of thee? Remember read that? What does God require of you, right? Read verse 13. Verse 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. And statue, which I command thee this day for thy good. So God requires you to keep the commandments. Regardless of the stipulation, regardless of the circumstances, I'll say it like that. God wants you to keep the commandments. That's it. Now go back to that again. The book of Leviticus, chapter 21 and verse 5. They shall not make bonus upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. Now that says. Neither should you shave off the corner of your beard. You understand? You got a beard, you got to let it grow. You see all the brothers out here? We're, the, we're keeping that. We're keeping God's commandments. Now, 2nd Ezra 14, 13. Watch this, Nigel. Hey, your, your children, right? Let me ask you something. Slide over Moses. Who would they say this is? Who would your children say this is on? Let's call them over there. I want to ask them. Hey, listen. There's nothing more important than information. You understand? Out of this Bible, Christ said in John 8, 32, you should know the truth and the truth should make you free. I want to know who they think this is right here. You should call them. Let's ask them. Let's ask them. Call them. Call them. Me, 14, 13. The book of second Andrews. Chapter 14, verse 13. Now, therefore, set thine house in order and reprove thy people. What's going on, young man? What's going on? What's your name? Kamarius? Kamarian. I like that. I got a question. This right here. Who's that? That's Jesus. Who taught you that? Yourself. You probably saw it on TV. Well, who's, who's this over here? Who's that? You don't know, right? 
So all of these images right here are different variations of that one. You said this is Jesus, right? So now, we're going to read the Bible, right? Get John 8, 32 first, and then Revelation 1. What about them, Niger? What about them? What about them? Hey, hey, Kamaria, get grab them, grab them. They trying to, bro. They gotta get this information. Young man, let me ask you a question. I just asked Kamaria, who's this right here? That's Jesus. Who you said this is? Jesus. Okay. Now. I will show y'all something. Watch this, John 8, 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You ever heard that before? It says you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, right? So there's nothing more valuable in this planet Earth than truth, you understand? That's what Christ is saying. Now, we're gonna read this true depiction out of the Bible, right? Revelation 1, 14. Oh, Mario, you gotta listen. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. His head, and his head, were white like wool. Little sis. Now, what does woolly mean? What does that mean? His, his hair was like wool. What texture? Who has woolly, woolly hair on the planet of today? What people? That's woolly hair. That's woolly hair right there. That's it, just like him, right? It's different grades of it, but that's woolly hair. Read it again. His head and his hair were white like wool. Now, get verse one so they can see who we talking about. Listen, hey, what's your name, sis? Kanaya? Anaya, watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter one and verse one. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So now, we're reading about Jesus Christ. I'm gonna try to understand that. Go to back, back to verse 14, watch this. Verse 14, his head, his head. So the hair on his head and his face, go ahead. Were white like wool. It was white and it was woolly like his hair. Now, do any of these images, are any of them white or woolly like his hair or woolly like his hair? Is the hair like this? Is it white? Is it woolly? Where, where do you see wool? Show me the wool then. Any of the pictures like his here? They're not, right? No. So now, that's strike one against these particular images. The Bible doesn't say Christ looked like this. Okay, read on. As white as snow. Now it's confirming that it's white as snow. Now, for example, I asked Kamarion, who's this? He said, I don't know. Now, does he have white woolly hair? Yes. Is it as white as snow? Yes. Read, read it again from the top. His head and his hairs were white like wool. White like wool, as white as snow. As white as snow. So now that lines up, right? This lines up. Now, come, come close, come close. Y'all come close. Look at what's happening here. You see this image in the back, right? That's a dark image, right? What is, he, what is this white man doing right here? Huh? Painting him, he's repainting him again, but what color? White. White. That's how we got this right here. You see that? They taught us lies. They taught us lies. Now, let's finish it out. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, his eyes were as a flame of fire, meaning the whites of his eyes were red. You see that? That's what it's talking about. Read on. His feet like a divine bread. And his what? His feet like a divine bread. The Bible says his feet was like fine brass. What color is brass? What color is brass? You see it? That's brass. What color is it? Brown, right? It said his feet was like that. So now, are the top of your feet the same color as the rest of your body? Yes, right? So John looked at his feet, he was like, his feet was like fine brass. You know? So now, quick question. Would his feet be like brown? What about him? No, none of these images, his feet would not be like fine brass, right? We don't. As if they burned in a furnace. Now, Kamarion, if you took brown and you burned it, 
What color would it turn? Dark, right? Really, really dark. So now, the Bible says Christ's feet was really, really dark. That's why his face is really, really dark right here. You understand? So Christ would look like you. Y'all look like Christ. Okay, Christ is within you. You understand? What's your name? Nigel. Okay, Christ is within you. I see Christ in you. Christ looks just like you. You understand? This is not Jesus the Christ. So go back to John 8, 32 again. John 8, 32. Look at the time. Chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Jesus Christ said to himself, the truth shall make you free. Free from what? Lies, oppression, and so forth. That's a lie. So now, Samaria, I'm going to ask you again. Who's this right here? Huh? Right, it's a lot. I'm going to give you his name. This is who it is right here. Cesar Borgia. Okay? That's who that is. Damn, they throw stuff. Come on, go back. And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Let me ask you something, Nigel. What, what's the purpose of that? I don't even understand. What, what's the purpose of staying out here and getting hit by bags and shit? Wait, what's the purpose? What are we doing? It's, it's fun to just throw stuff at people and then get hit over the head? Come on, man. Hey, hey, let me show you something. Get Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23, start at 1. Nigel, watch this. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. Unto who? Unto the children of Israel. Hey, Nigel, what tribe do you come from? What tribe do you come from? All right, so look at this up. Are you so-called American, Black, West Indian, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Native American? When you fill out a job application, what do you put down? Okay, so you're from the tribe of Judah. That's the same tribe Christ himself came from, which we just read. He has white woolly hair, and his skin looked like it was burned in a furnace. That's Judah right there. That's the Jew. The Jews, according to the Bible, are black people. Get us in. Now go back. Come on, read that. And say unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord, which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. God's feast are found in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Guess what? Mardi Gras is not a feast of the Lord. That's right. Read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying unto them, concerning the feast of the Lord. Concerning the feast of who? The Lord. The feast of God. Go ahead. Which he shall proclaim to be holy convocations. Even these are my feasts. These are God's feasts. Mardi Gras is not one of God's feasts. That's right. You so-called Negroes are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's right. You got to come back and keep God's commandments. We were brought here on slave ships for breaking God's commandments. That's right. All of this out here is breaking God's commandments. Mardi Gras, again, is not a feast of God. You understand? You read about Passover, Tabernacles, Pentecost. Okay? Those are the feasts of God. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.